Moving on to the next example for the power rule, we got these three functions here and we have to find each of their respective derivatives. Now these functions are pretty complex and finding the derivative, the step in which we find the derivative when we use the power rule is not going to be complex. What's going to be complex is manipulating these algebraically to get it to a point where finding the derivative is going to be a smooth process using that power rule. So what you always want to do with these types of functions is try to get all the terms in this format where you have a constant k in front of the x term. Sometimes there won't be a constant, so there'll just be a one there. And it'll be x to the power of some kind of real number. So let's start off with this first function here. So we got x over four to the power of three plus three over x squared minus seven times the fourth root of x. Well, this first part here, what you always want to do whenever you have a bracket with an exponent outside is distribute the exponent inside if possible. And it's possible to do so in this case, we'd have x to the power of 3 over 4 to the power of 3. Now, whenever you have an exponent or a variable in the denominator, you want to bring that variable up to the numerator. So we can rewrite 3 over x squared as 3 x to the power of negative 2. So when you bring that exponent up to the numerator, it becomes a negative. You may have to review your exponent laws. And then, as we mentioned in the previous video, the 7 would stay as is. Now this fourth root of x, we want to change that into an exponent. So it would be x to the power of 1 over 4. Now, these two terms here are in the form k and a, a constant times x to the power of n. Here we have x to the power of negative 2, x to the power of 1 over 4. However, this one is not in this format yet. But this 4 over 3, 4 to the power of 3 is 64. So we can rewrite this as 1 over 64 x to the power of 3. And then this is still 3x to the negative 2. And then this is minus 7x to the power of 1 over 4. So we took this original function here, algebraically manipulated it first to get every term in this format. And now we can find the derivative of each of these by applying the power rule. So the derivative would be for this first term here, we would bring the 3 down. And then 3 times 1 over 64, that's just 3 over 64 and that fraction can't simplify any further, and we would subtract 1 from the exponent. So we'd have x squared left there. Here, same thing, we bring the negative 2 down. There's this constant in front, so positive 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6. So this would be negative 6x to the power of negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. If this was a positive 2, it would be 2 minus 1, so we'd be left with x to the power of 1 in the exponent. But because it's negative, negative 2 minus 1, that gives us negative 3, so be careful with that. And then here, keeping this constant the same, 1 over 4 times 7 gives us 7 over 4. And then subtracting 1 from 1 over 4, we get negative 3 over 4. Now, depending on your teacher, some teachers will allow you to leave the derivative in this format. A lot of teachers will want it in a nicer format. In terms of any negative exponents, they have to be positive. And then any rational exponents, they have to be turned into radicals. So let's try to make this look a little nicer. So we can actually, this first term, 3 over 64 times x squared, we can combine into 3x squared over 64. And then this here, this minus 6 x to the power of negative 3, well, the x to the power of negative 3 we could bring down to the denominator like it was here in this format. And then that uh, negative 3 in the exponent would turn into a positive 3. So we'd have minus 6 over x to the power of 3. Now notice how we only took down the x to the denominator. A lot of students sometimes will take this constant down to the denominator, but this constant is not to the power of negative 3. If there was a bracket uh, around the 6x and that whole bracket was to the power of negative 3, then we would take that constant as well down to the denominator. But because only that x is to the power of negative 3, only the x comes down. And then here, this one's a little bit more complex. So 
This x to the power of negative 3 over 4, because the exponent is negative, we want to bring it down to the denominator to make it positive. So we'd have 7 over 4 x to the power of 3 over 4. So everything stayed the same. We just brought this x to the negative 3 over 4 down. And then we sort of combine all the numerators. It was just 7 in the numerator. And then the 4 and that x to the power of 3 over 4 we combine in the denominator. Now x to the power of 3 over 4, we can rewrite that as x to the power of 3 to the power of 1 over 4. And then that we can rewrite as the fourth root of x to the power of 3. So then taking this x to the power of 3 over 4, instead of writing it as an x to the power of a rational exponent, we want to have it in terms of radicals because that's what our original function was in terms of. So instead of putting x to the power of 3 over 4 here, we would put this fourth root of x to the power of 3. So this here represents the derivative again, but in this case, it's a little nicer. It's simplified and it's in a nice format and a lot of teachers want it in this format. They don't want any negative exponents left and they don't want any rational exponents left. You have to change it to a radical. So this here is the final answer for the derivative for this original function that we had here. Moving on to the second example, we got 3x squared bracket x plus root x as the function f of x and we have to find the derivative. So let's try to manipulate this f of x to try to get all the terms in this format, either add it or subtract it together, and then we can smoothly find the derivative. So in this case, let's distribute this 3x squared inside the bracket. So 3x squared times x, that would just give us 3x to the power of 3. And then 3x squared times the square root of x, well the square root of x, we know that's equal to x to the power of 1 half. So then x squared, this x squared here, times x to the power of 1 over 2, because we are multiplying two exponents with the same base, we can just add the exponents. So 2 plus 1 over 2, that would give us 5 over 2, or 2.5. So we can rewrite this as 3, the 3 stays, x to the power of 5 over 2. Because x squared times the square root of x, or x to the power of a half, is x to the power of 5 over 2. And now, notice how we took that function, and each term now is in this format. So now we can find the derivative, and we just apply the power rule to each of these expressions. So 3x to the power of 3, bring the 3 down, 3 times 3 is 9, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we'd have x squared left. Then here, 3 times 5 over 2, we bring the 5 over 2 down, 3 times 5 over 2 gives us 15 over 2, and then 5 over 2 minus 1 would give us x to the power of 3 over 2. Now again, you can leave the final derivative as this, which is the correct answer. However, a lot of teachers want it in a nicer format. They don't want any rational exponents left. They want it in terms of radicals, especially if the original function was in terms of radicals. So this x to the power of 3 over 2, we can rewrite as x to the power of 3 to the power of 1 over 2, right? So we just took uh, the 3 over 2 and sort of split it up because 3 times 1 over 2 would give us 3 over 2. And then this we can rewrite as just the square root of x cubed. So we can rewrite this derivative as 9x squared. So we'd rewrite the 9x squared as is. And then this 15 over 2, we would just multiply by this square root of x cubed. And this would be like over 1, so we can actually take the numerator of 15 and multiply it by this numerator, so we'd have 15 the square root of x cubed, and then 2 in the denominator times this 1 in the denominator would just give us 2. So that there here represents our derivative, our simplified derivative of this function up there. And then our last example, we got f of x equals 3x squared all to the power of 2 minus the square root of x to the power of 3, and then that's all over x. So let's deal with this numerator first. So we got this 3x squared to the power of 2. 
Well, because this whole bracket is to the power of two, and then these two terms are multiplied, this three and this x squared, we can distribute that exponent to inside the bracket. So three to the power of two would give us nine, and then x to the power of two to the power of two would give us x to the power of four. We would just multiply those exponents. And then this square root of x cubed, remember you always wanna take any radicals, change them into rational exponents, and the square root of x to the power of three is actually what we worked with here. However, we're going backwards now. We're taking that square root of x to the power of three, and then we're changing it to x to the power of three over two. So we'd have nine x to the power of four minus x to the power of three over two, and then this is still all over x. So we're getting closer to getting the terms all in this format, but notice how this is a bit of a unique situation we haven't dealt with. We have two terms in the numerator and it's all over x. Well, what we can do is we can split up this fraction into two fractions. So we can take f of x, we can take this nine x to the power of four and put it over x, and then we can take this x to the power of three over two and then put it over x as well, common denominator. And now we can simplify each of these. So we'd have nine x to the power of four over x to the power of one. Whenever you're dividing exponents with the same base, you can just subtract the, um, the exponents. So we'd be left with nine x to the power of three here, minus x to the power of three over two divided by x to the power of one, same base, subtract the exponents. We'd be left with x to the power of a positive half there. And now notice how each of these terms in this simplified function is in this format. So now we can find the derivative using the power rule for each of these terms. So the derivative of f of x, the derivative of nine x cubed, we would bring the three down, three times nine is 27, and then we would subtract one from the exponent, so we'd be left with x squared. And then this one here, we would uh, take this one half, bring it down so we'd have minus one over two x to the power of one half minus one gives us negative one over two. So that there represents our final derivative for this function. However, notice that we have this x to the power of a negative exponent and it's a rational exponent as well. So let's make it look a little nicer. So we can rewrite the derivative as 27 x to the power of two minus, let's keep this one half separate, and then let's just deal with this x to the power of negative one half separately as well, and then we'll combine them. So x to the power of negative one half, if we bring that down, it becomes positive, so it'd be one over x to the power of positive one over two. And then we also know that x to the power of a half, that's the same as the square root of x. So changing that to the square root of x and then combining those fractions, we'd get a final derivative of 27 x squared minus one over two square root of x. So we took these ones, multiplied them, and then two times the square root of x is just two square root of x. So this here represents the final simplified derivative for this function. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.